Welcome back. You're watching the second half of World News Today. I'm Randall Jamias, and to start off, China is facing a super typhoon called Sanba with winds up to 200 kilometers per hour. The country is expected to receive heavy rains and gusty winds. More details from CCTV. The meteorological department says it will bring heavy rain to the coastal areas of Fujian province. Rainfall has already exceeded 100 millimeters in northern and central parts of the province. It's also expected to bring either high waves to the Fujian and Mindong fishing grounds. Meanwhile, California of the U.S. is all out against the wildfires. The fires erupted near the Jetty Center in Los Angeles on Friday, threatening homes in the upmarket Bel Air neighborhood. Wildfire burned at least two acres in an area close to homes. Officials fear the blaze could spread quickly in high temperatures and dry conditions. Crews used helicopters and airplanes to dump thousands of gallons of water on the flames, which local media said had now been brought under control. The cause of the blaze is still unknown. Houses in the future would use much of the renewable and available energy, the solar power. Teams of students from around the world have built 19 solar-powered homes in Madrid for a contest that shows how the energy self-sufficient houses of tomorrow could look. AFP reports. This could just be the home of the future. A solar-powered building with a communal top floor that's bathed in light beneath a solar panel roof. It's an environmentally friendly project dreamed up by French students. They're competing with 18 other teams who've come to Madrid from around the world to show off homes that rely entirely on the sun for energy. This is the home of the future. We're paying attention to where the materials come from, how they're used, and the most environmentally friendly energy source possible. In this case, the sun. For the ground floor, they've created a room with adjustable walls. Depending on how many guests you have, you can move this side and then can open up a table and eat together. Each dwelling stretches the imagination. The Japanese have dreamed up a self-sufficient home with its own rice paddy and aromatic plants. A Portuguese house can swivel 180 degrees to catch the sun's rays. Each entrant receives a subsidy of 50,000 euros from the Spanish government. They have business sponsors. This house is built entirely from bamboo. Inside, we made the courtyard. The courtyard is ventilation is a passive ventilation system. In the normal day, we no need to open the air condition, but the wind is blowing inside with a, like a chimney and taking the air out. And actually, we put all the instruments all the facilities in this small courtyard. The 19 homes face 10 separate trials of their energy efficiency and comfort. The winner of the solar decathlon will be declared at the end of the month. Next year, the contest moves to China. And talking about saving the environment, environmental groups say they are encouraged by ambitious plans recently announced by Airbus to fly its aircraft in flock formation by the middle of the century. The company's Smarter Skies concepts also include steeper takeoffs to reduce journey times and gentler glide-in landings. Jim Jury has more. This isn't birds flying in formation, but Airbus's futuristic vision of air travel. The aviation giant says by 2050, groups of planes could fly side by side, making air travel more efficient and reducing time. It may seem like a radical idea. Dying, actually, we're not talking about the red arrow, so you're not you know, really uh, wing to wing flying together. We're talking about maybe one mile uh, nautical mile separation, so you actually use the aircraft in front of you to, to shoot to, uh, to that. We, we did that with uh, the Air Force REM, our military aircraft, and, and the pilot told me that actually you, you save for a 10 to 15 percent fuel. The airline's smarter skies concepts also include assisted eco climb takeoff where planes without undercarriages are propelled skywards by mechanical trolleys. Aircraft could self-organize in so-called express skyways, selecting the most efficient and environmentally friendly routes. And when back on the ground, planes could be maneuvered onto a track system at the airport using inbuilt electromagnetic motors. Aviation analyst Howard Wielden insists improvements don't all have to be cutting edge. 
airport themselves are very, very in inefficient structures. Uh, and of course, the amount of taxiing in the, uh, on the airport and indeed uh, the, the delays caused in getting into the airport, uh, aircraft having to, having to uh, fly around for, for 15, 20 minutes, uh, often over half an hour. Uh, to actually before they can actually land. There's lots of ways you can save fuel and that's before you start doing bringing in even, even better technology. Yeah. Cut average flights by 13 minutes and save almost 30 minutes CO2 emissions a year. Environmental lawyer Alan Andrews calls the plans exciting and evidence that tough EU emissions targets are affecting airline sinking. But he offers a word. What we've got to bear in mind here is the overall aim of these ideas is to meet an threat. Uh, that, that's clearly stated. If the overall reduction in carbon dioxide and the pollutants by the nitrogen, which are harmful to human, to human health and the environment. So while we might see a reduction in the emissions from each plane that's taking off, the overall intensity is going to continue to grow in terms of emissions of carbon. Airbus insists it's serious about cutting emissions and has pledged to use sustainable to the alternative energy sources. None of the proposed technologies are close to fruition, but Airbus says that in a world of diminishing resources, it's committed to blue sky. In a rather fatal and amusing stunt, China's Prince of Tightrope Walker, Adeli Waxer, and two of his students have completed a challenging walk across 350-meter tightrope in central China's Hunan province. Let's take a look. The most difficult part of the challenge was the huge swaying as the three performers were on tightrope at the same time. And what's more amazing was that they successfully swapped places with each other on the rope which had a diameter of just three and a half centimeters. The 1400 meter long tightrope can parallel to the bridge at a maximum 350 meters above the ground. Tightrope walking, also known as Dawa in northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, is a traditional Uyghur sport that dates back 2,000 years ago. And finally in golf, Juan Martin Del Potro beat Radek Stepanek 6-4, 6-4, to put Argentinian 1-0 up against Czech Republic in their Davis Cup semifinal on Friday. De Potro had to see four break points in the eighth game before the, he broke the check. He gave away one break point in the second set but broke back in the next game and again in the seventh. The Panic had won three of their last four meetings. In the decider, Del Potro broke in the first and fifth games and settled the rubber on his serve with his first match point when Stepanek went wide with a return. Czech world number six, Tomas Berdik, faces Juan Monaco in the second singles on the clay court at the Maritaran de Wise Stadium. The winning team will meet holders, Spain or the United States in the final. That's all we have for today on the World News. From Myanmar International, I'm Randolph Jainas saying thank you and hope to see you again next time.